Uh, welcome to Waiter Nation. My name is Michael Fagan. I'm your host. I'm excited today to talk to Christina Martin. She's known in our area as the vegan chef. She's a culinary educator. Um, you're a mom. You're a co-host on or a contributor to a radio show called Small Bites, which is the biggest, what is it, the biggest food radio show in Philly? Philly. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were saying? And you brought a friend. You have a rescue dog that you just got, Christina. How are you? Yeah. Hi, how are you, Michael? Nice to talk to you. This is uh, Theo. He's uh, my newest addition. He's a rescue uh, puppy. He's actually eight years old. Um, I picked him up uh, Monday. It'll be two weeks. I've had him. And it's like having a little uh, kid, baby, because he keeps you up all night. <laughs> you don't have enough to do during this uh, time off that you, you had to get a dog? Yeah, I know. I, I um. I don't know. I just thought it would be a nice thing to do. I uh, actually have a big birthday coming up in September and I can't go anywhere. So I thought, well, why not get a friend? So um, that's a good idea. I'm giving Tell me, a life. <laughs> you're, you're a culinary educator. How do you do that or what school or where, where do you educate? So I started after I worked in restaurants, I actually started at a culinary school in Philadelphia called JNA um, uh, Institute of Culinary Arts. And, um, then I got into um, high school. That was college. And I got an opportunity to teach a summer camp and I moved over to um, high school. And um, this year I'll be starting in Galloway um, in a high school called Atsagami. And I'll be their culinary, one of their culinary arts teachers, um, basically teaching uh, level two and level three of culinary arts. And their fourth year students uh, get to go over to the Atlantic Cape, um, which is a really cool opportunity. Uh, for for culinary students, all my kids went to Absagami, so I'm real familiar, and I live close <laughs> by. Um, so you teach? Do you teach just twelfth grade, or is eleven twelfth grade, or all of high school? No, I'll be ninth, um, ninth and tenth most mostly. And, and then, if they're interested in following that career, uh, they go to ACCC. Is that what you said? Yeah, like in their like a co-op, I guess, like their fourth year, their fourth, um, their their twelfth grade year. If they're right. in, you know, they've done it from ninth to twelfth, um, they get to go over there. So that's a great opportunity for them to get a jump start um, for those that want to go into culinary. So this is but, this is more intense and, and a lot more knowledge than your standard home ec class. Uh, it's a step up from home ec. Home uh -huh. ec. Most schools don't really have home ec anymore. It's more uh, <laughs> trying to teach a trade. Um, they learn, uh, you know, sanitation. They learn knife skills. You know, a lot of the basics and. I get to do fun stuff like um, would you have a garden? Okay. Um, like I said, I'll be new to this school. They do have a garden, which is one thing that I made sure of before I took the job that I think it's really important to teach kids where food comes from. Um, and they eat when they grow. When they learn how to grow it, they normally will eat it too. Or at least well, there seems it. like a lot of life skills involved there too. Just if you don't go into the field, you learn how to cook at home. You learn how to maybe have a, a – an activity like gardening outside where you can take pride in creating something. So, mm -hmm. and we all have to eat, right? So I, you know, I tell the students, look, maybe you'll go to college for something else and you'll want to work at a pizza shop, you know, in mm -hmm. the summer, or you might want to work at a restaurant serving in the summer. Um, so, you know, you, you'll have that skill, but then you always have to feed yourself or feed your loved ones or your friends and family. So you'll learn that as well. And, you know, we teach the basics, everything, soups and stocks and, um, sauces and, um, you know. Yeah. So even if they don't take it up, uh, right now, at least they have that understanding of, of what a stock is. So later right. on in life, when they have a family, they, they know how to cook with a little flavor. Um, how is school going? Are you on schedule to open? And so what we hear right now is that we are scheduled to open in a hybrid method, um, where partial students will come in for two days and then another half will come in another two days and it'll be a rotating basis. A lot of the schools in the area in New Jersey, from what I'm, as I'm talking to all my friends that teach, mm -hmm. uh, are going to a, some type of hybrid method. Some, some of the schools will go with one day off, four days um, in school. Um, some schools that are uh, technical that have um, trades are just bringing the trade trades in and have an academics be virtual. It's right. all, to the district how they decide to run it um but as of the last i had a meeting last week um we're waiting on the governor we're gonna like wait it. you know he's supposed to come out with another announcement 
Right. Everybody's just waiting on a governor. I'm waiting on the governor too. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because I was thinking uh, with you to do a Zoom meeting. Uh, I mean, you're hands on. You're a trade. You you can cook something and they can watch, or you can show how it's done. But you're really not going to understand it unless you're in there actually doing it. And then the kids can't be home with a cutting board and a knife and cooking behind. It, I mean, it's it. No, there's too much liability in it. So my last school, the school that I was at when we went on to um, COVID, when we went on break was in March, um, we were not allowed to use Zoom. Mm -hmm. We were not allowed to um, use YouTube. We were using Google Classroom. And up until the end, we didn't even know that there was Google's Meet so that we could even see the kids face to face. So everything was just assignments to the students and they had to fill it out and send, do the homework. So it was more like written work. But I did a lot of projects. Um, I actually took pictures of the garden from my at home. So I started the seeds at home and I posted pictures of the garden of the progress so the students could see that in Google Classroom. Um, a lot of students didn't have access to computers or internet. So that was, you know, a lot of schools juggling for that, trying to mm -hmm. get them set up with that. And, you know, a lot of the schools uh, had students that weren't, they, they didn't hold the students accountable. So you didn't really have to go to class. I had students who were working. Yeah. Well, before, before summer, when you were just finishing up last year, it's the goal was just get them out. Right. Right. Just get through yes. the year, through pass, pass them, get them out. Well, let's move on. And obviously everybody thought by September, everything will be normal. Right. We thought two weeks. We weren't, we didn't even take our stuff when they told us that Friday to leave. Yeah. Um, we thought it would be a couple days, like, you know, that they were going to disinfect the school or we never didn't know that we weren't going to have any of our supplies, let alone not be able to get back in the school to get them. Um, so that, you know, it was a learning, I fell asleep. <laughs> it was a learning <laughs> curve, a learning curve for everybody. And, um, but look, I really believe homeschool uh, people to homeschool all the time and it works. There's excellent programs out there. You just yes. have to have a plan and be organized. There is a way to teach culinary online. I mean, for some, you know, for a short time at least and have it be beneficial. Um, the problem is where other, the other thing was the school I was at, the kids didn't have access to food. So I couldn't require them to cook anything. Right. So, and, and again, the liability, you know, we don't know if the parents are going to be home when they're using a knife. Exactly. So you, you are known as like the vegan chef, all plant-based when you teach, are you only doing plant-based? No, no. I guess I'm glad that I went to Atlantic Cape because yeah. I, I learned traditional uh, culinary. So um, I do traditional culinary with a twist. So the students all know I'm, I eat vegan, I eat plant-based. Um, I try not to use the V word as much. I try to do plant-based because I want right. them to be, um, eat more vegetables and that's what it's about. Um, adding more healthy stuff to their diets because a lot of times when I do um, a lesson with students about nutrition and I say, let's, you know, write down everything you eat in one day. You know, yeah. the only fruit that I get back is ketchup. That's all they've eaten. <laughs> And the only vegetable is a potato. Right. And, uh, you, you know, I hear a lot of this. Uh, I had a, uh, a guy who's a keto expert. He's in the keto. Uh, it's not plant-based, but talking about, you, you know, and he, his struggle is to teach people like, it's not that hard. Like you're not going to, you don't have to flip your whole life upside down and have a second time job. You can, it's as easy as cooking a cheeseburger, doing a, a keto plate, or in your case, you know, being plant-based. Uh, I said a couple times, and this isn't my phrase, but it, it's really good. If you go to the vet with your dog and the dog is sluggish, they say, what's the dog been eating? But if you go to the doctor and you're like, hey, I just don't have the energy. They never ask you like, hey, what are you eating? You, you know, it's absolutely true. They don't. They say, you know, well, get more sleep or take vitamin C or something. But Exercise. if you say, well, I eat, I eat Doritos and a turkey sandwich every day and I drink an enormous amount of coffee, that probably is the reason <laughs> that you're not feeling well. But but food is in, in, and the other thing is it's so inexpensive to eat unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But it's because, actually, people think that it's expensive to eat healthy, but it really isn't. Because if you go to a place like... Um, and I'm not promoting any stores, but like, uh, you know, those vegetable outlet places like yeah. Produce Junction, like, yeah. the vegetables aren't going to last you for two weeks, but you're going to get 
um, inexpensive vegetables that you can use throughout the week. Or your farmer's markets. They're really not expensive. You know, I go to the farmer's market and spend under $20 and get a lot of vegetables. Um, so I think there's a lot of misconception about um, healthy food being expensive. And I think it's because the processed stuff is expensive. If you go buy a pint of vegan ice cream, you know, a little Ben and Jerry's, it's mm -hmm. $5.99. But I can go buy um, Briars for two, $2 when it's on sale or $1.99 for a whole gallon. Right. So it's where the processed food comes in that is the expense. But, you know, growing your own food, food doesn't cost much or getting at the farmer market or getting it at a, um, a produce outlet. Or now they even have the home delivery services and there's a lot down here in this area that do that. I always heard that uh, one good uh, lesson would be eat colorful food. If you're eating colorful food, then you're eating healthier. If you're eating everything that's brown and white, you, you're just eating potatoes and meat, you, you know, right, right. and they said, make it colorful, get peppers right, in there, get, get greens, get oranges, get yellows, get reds. And if you're doing that, that's a good start. And that's, right. uh, and I, right. so I always think when I look at my plates at home and I think it's all just brown. I think I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get some color in here. Add you know? some greens, uh, you know, a, a salad on the side. I mean, they're they're not saying to give up what you're already eating. Just add to it because you'll get the health benefits by adding to it. Right, and people say you know, like, "Well, nice where do?" You is, I'm sorry. What's nice is when you go to restaurants now. You're, they're more and more are accommodating to that, to plant based. More, more and more are accommodating. I know where I work, it's always, uh, we, we will even have a list, you know, uh, so when people come in and they're, and they, they want to eat vegan or plant-based and they say, uh, sure, these are the options. Boom, 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 boom. And, right. and you can just rattle it off. Um, so I get to see you. I can come to the steakhouse because I haven't seen you in three years. <laughs> yeah. In the steakhouse where I'm at, it's kind of tough. I mean, we, you know, we'll put like a vegetable platter together, something yeah. like that. Nice salad in the beginning, maybe a vegetable platter and, and whatever the chef has fresh. He'll put maybe four or five things on a plate. Something like that is is what we do. So but obviously 95 percent of our menu is uh, is steak. Um, a lot of people also say, well, I'm, I'm not eating protein. I'm not getting a lot of protein. And I think, well, how much protein are you getting with your crappy burger? Or, you know, like it's really not a lot of protein, right? Well, no, meat has protein, but you can right. get um, protein, a lot of protein from vegetables and beans, legumes, um, spinach. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to get your protein. And, and there's tofu and there's, there's, I don't really go towards that fake meat stuff. I know a lot of the, um, the casinos have Beyond Burgers now mm -hmm. um, down in AC. Hey, he's slipping. He's falling asleep. Um a lot of the um, casinos offer Beyond Burger or Impossible Burger. I mean, look, Dunkin' Donuts even has plant-based burgers. The problem with those is, is they're full of chemicals and full of, they're still high in fat. So if you're looking at it from a health perspective, you kind of want to stay away from that stuff. You know, you want to do a Portobello burger or, um, you know, a black bean burger, you know, and, and stay away from that fake um, processed stuff because it's high in sodium, um, high in fat. A lot of it is made with coconut oil. So it's going to be high in fat. Right. So during this time off that you're not able to be in a kitchen and teaching, uh, you've been doing some demos or zoom demos or, or live demonstrations. How's that been yeah, going? So, so yeah, I mean, we've seen everybody baking their bread and, uh, yeah. you know, watching all the chefs that have been on, um, you know, from their kitchens. And, um, I'm, I like, I miss the community ed classes cause that's where I started. Um, I was all set to have community ed classes in Brigantine this year. Um, I had access to the community center mm -hmm. and we had a whole list of classes that were starting and everything, you know, of course was canceled. But um, a lot of my friends have been doing online stuff. I did um, a cook along with a woman who teaches, um, chef that teaches Indian cuisine. And we had a fun time with that. Um, and then Sunday I was on Chef AJ's program. She's a vegan chef from California. And that went really well. But, um, and Theo made a guest appearance on there too. <laughs> Well, uh, the one good thing about uh, this and doing Zoom or what I use here is that you can talk to anybody, any place. So you can connect with somebody in California. How do you know that chef just along so, the way? Yeah, so along my journey. So I used to do a, um, conf a vegan a vegetarian conference in uh, every July. I think I went for 10 years and I was uh, in the demo room helping with the, sh with the cooking demos for all the vegan chefs that have written cookbooks. 
um, I was their prep person and I met her. She was one of the chefs that came in. She actually does uh, no sugar, no oil, no salt diet. It's very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very difficult to cook like that. But I did a pickled veg, um, showed them how to pickle vegetables, and I made a um, vegan take on a bomb me. So I used tofu and pickled veg. And um, yeah, you can see it. It's on um, Chef AJ's uh, Facebook and also her YouTube. Um, so we got a lot, a lot of people watching. A lot of people already made it and messaged me. And that's the best part. Like right. they, they've already made it and said, oh, I loved it, you know, and that's, that's the, that's the payoff right now, since we're not getting paid is, um, but it's well, connections, the connections, right? So, um, but I have an interesting class coming up. So, uh, my friend, Nathan, um, he's a, a master sommelier in Texas. Him and I started plant-based chat on Twitter. Okay. We to do something like this, but I, I don't know why we didn't do a Facebook live, but we did it on Twitter as a uh, food chat. And every Thursday night, we ask six questions and we've been building a community. It's our sixth week. Um, we ask like six questions around a theme, whether it's all plant-based, but it's a theme, Italian, picnic, date night. Um, and it's been going really well. And we're building, you know, we're building a following and we're helping people because they'll ask questions, they'll ask for recipes. But um, we've had someone contact us from Florida and ask us to do a, they miss having their friends over. They they um, they get together with their neighbors all the mm -hmm. time, and they can't. They want us to do a wine pairing dinner for them on Zoom. So we're gonna give them the entree list of ingredients. I'm gonna teach how to put it together. Nate's gonna talk about pairing the wines. Um, he's gonna contact the store down there, pick out the wines for them. They're just gonna go pick it up, and then we're gonna do it virtual. So you're going to have a party with everybody, put a couple people in some squares and then yep. try the wine, try the food. Yep. They're going to cook while, and then they're going to sit down and all eat together and have their normal dinner that they would have in their house over Zoom. So, yeah, it is. It There's a lot of people adapting in different ways. And that is one thing that's like a, a social experience uh, virtually. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people that still don't want to get together. Right. Yeah, a lot of, right, a lot of, half the country is fighting to take their masks off and get together, and half the country is fighting to stay in their house and don't see anybody. I don't know what the answer is, but that's that's what I see. And until... It's, it's scary. I mean, I went, when I went to orientation last week, I had, uh, I went outside for lunch to eat my lunch in the car, and a teacher um, that works at another, actually works in the restaurant industry, texted me and said, I have to leave, I have to go quarantine. Someone at that restaurant... Got, has COVID. So he's at home now waiting. Luckily, I had my mask on when I talked to him because he was two foot in front of me. Yeah. When I went, I guess the argument is, you know, is it real? Is it deadly? Or is it just a cold? You, you know, and until we figure that out or until the whole consensus is clear, because everybody's clear about it, but, you know, the government and the rules, and like you said, the, the governor. Uh, I don't know what to do. So do we just open up everything or do we just close down everything? Because this halfway in between financially is to, like everybody I know lost insurance, lost their weekly income, you, you know, doing things like this just to stay connected to people. But um, terribly, terribly. And, frustrated. Teaching, and as teachers, I, I know every state's different. But in New Jersey, the district I'm, I was at, um, we only get paid 10 months. Right. So as of June 30th, that's your last check. You cannot get unemployment for July and August. So you have to be very vigilant and budgeting and making sure you have your mortgage payment and because you don't get paid until September. And if you were dependent on that summer income of teaching classes or working in a restaurant, right, you know, or catering, you lost all that. I know. I I know. Uh I know the health scare is obviously serious. But then the financial scare is uh, terrifying to me, <laughs> you know, like I, I can't stay out of work all year. Right. Right. But right. You were talking about uh, a book and uh, the chef in California had a book and you were, you were telling me a little off air that you were thinking about. I've been talking to a couple people and I've always been advised to write a book. If you put an author in front of your name, all of a sudden you step up in status. You're like, for real, you're legit. Even if nobody reads your book. So what were you thinking about with a book? Well, they say there's no money in a book, but I think I just wanted one because of accomplishment for myself. Right. And um, like you said, you do get more speaking things. You get, you know, you get more um, 
uh, avenues of, you know, to do other things with it. And, and I mean, you, you do sell it on the side, you know, you can teach a cooking class and sell a book or, you know, and like you said, having the author, but um, mine was going to be a vegan one. Um, I actually had submitted a proposal uh, of a bunch of ideas. They had like two of them. They had said that it was going to be book one and book two. Then COVID hit. Then they came back to me and said, we want you to do cooking demos or videos. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not, a, I, I like having people in front of me. I don't like sitting and talking to a, a computer screen and teaching. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I'm trying to build up the following to see if I could get, um, to get the deal again. I mean, I know they're self-publishing, but that's a long road and it's expensive. But, um, you know, the publisher said if they're going to put $50,000 into a book, then, you know, they want to make sure I could sell it. Right. It's funny with a lot of uh, production TV shows, uh, a, a lot of young kids that are trying to be actors and models, They on the application is how many Instagram followers do you have? Yeah. You know, it's it's about social media. So if you're popular already, you, you know, and I think, well, if I'm popular already, then I don't need you. You know, if I have a million followers, why do I need you? I can do everything by myself. So people with big followings, I would always advise to uh, just keep doing it on your own because if you get the eyes, then you you can sell or you can monetize in one way or another. Right, and 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 it would be nice. So the books that I had um, ideas was um, making vegan food easy. Like the other day when I did the video for uh, the cooking demo and I made the the tofu baked sandwich, it was I did it under an hour, and you shouldn't have to make a meal over an hour for lunch. Yeah, like. That's the other complaint about healthy food. It takes too long to cook. And I want to show people that it doesn't take long to cook and that you can, you know, make a sandwich like that and have it for work the next day, you know, or have, a, you know, have it for lunch or dinner, or, you know, making easy things. I remember one year I was cooking during the Super Bowl and I was trying to, this is what I was making um, food. I was making wings. I was making um, chicken wings and it was Bobby Flay recipe. And I, it was one of the stars. I think it was him or it was somebody else. And I, it had 21 ingredients and I was missing the dang Super Bowl and I was cursing him out because I was in the kitchen making these wings when right. I could be enjoying the Super Bowl. And from then on, I stopped with those long recipes. You don't need to have 21 ingredients in it. Simple flavors and not a lot of gadgets either. I mean, everybody's trying to tell me this air fryer business. Uh, I should get an air fryer. What would you air fry other than meat oh, and chicken? Okay. All vegetables. Okay. Go in there. You know, you can make air fried potatoes, cauliflower, um, tofu. Um, supposedly, I don't know. I guess I got to get it and try it. So, um, as they were talking to you about doing videos, are they talking about uh, you self producing, editing? You know, the kind of things that you see on like Tasty or Eatery or things like that. Uh, more like YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they wanted me to have a YouTube channel and. Um, you know, put them up on YouTube. YouTube is so, I mean, as if we talk about social media and I had a social media star on last week that was, was very, didn't get that much attention across like Instagram and, and YouTube and Facebook. And then went on TikTok. and you think TikTok is like all girls in bikinis and like, you know, pranks. That's, that's what I thought it was. I really don't right. go on a whole lot. I've seen it a couple of times. Um, but he does these little skits and be got millions and millions. Like yeah. he's a, he's like a star. And then people started sharing him around. So he was like, so I think that, you know, one site might not be, you know, you just say YouTube, YouTube is so hard to just to get a following because oh, it's yeah. like, it's just throwing something up into space and like, hopefully it bumps into somebody. It's so hard to connect and, and then move, you, you know, based on uh, your title, your clickbait, you're editing the other things you link on to. So um, it's hard. You know, 10 years ago when people started making a, a big run at YouTube, it was a little easier. There wasn't that much competition. Now there's, you know, a billion hours a day uploaded or something like that. So it's it's very competitive and you don't have a base. So I like the Twitter thing that you were talking about because at least you have a base and then you can build and then you can retweet and then, you know, right. you can go, go forward build, from that. You build a community, people follow you. Um, yeah, you can still post pictures of like, if we ask a question about a dish, uh, we did pub food last week or the week mm -hmm. before and it was really fun. I mean, and it gets people to be creative. What pub food can you think of that's plant-based and, um, actually yard house tweeted at us, um, because they have a vegan burger. So it was kind of fun to get the restaurants involved in it. 
it's so hard because there's only so many so many hours in a day and there, you, people's attention i mean if they, they might have a podcast that they're already watching or a show that they're already right. watching you, you know so it's so hard you know uh if they're on twitter if they're on facebook to get that community up and going uh so, sometimes it's uh it's frustrated but it is rewarding like you said when somebody you know will 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 tweet into you will say that do you get a lot of interaction going back and forth on the twitter oh yeah uh, the twitter yeah I do a lot of retweets and we've met people from all over i've had people from the uk now reach out mm -hmm. uh, plant base is really big in the uk uh more so than here and in california so we have people um from the uk and uh, the problem is it's a time zone thing now so if i have a show on at 8 30 it's 1 1 30 in the morning there or whatever and mm -hmm. uh, so they i can't get the listeners because they're sleeping <laughs> yeah i i have a guy on a, from australia that i'm talking to and i don't it, it's like 14 hours different so oh, i yeah. don't know whether to do mine at nine o'clock in the morning and his at 11 o'clock at night or do it the other way around, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and then maybe just uh, people will share it afterwards or something like that. And but definitely- it's wonderful. it's wonderful to connect with them, right? I mean, it's, and to find out what they're doing over there and um, especially even during lockdown to see what, how they're dealing with all of this. Well, my, my couple questions to them over there is obviously like, uh, it's nice to know that they, at least in restaurants or in hospitality, they're, they're doing more or less the same thing that we do. And they're going through similar experiences mm -hmm. with customers, with price points, with wine, with pairing, with vegan, with everything. Right. So that's nice to know that like, Hey, we're just not doing it alone. But then I always ask them, uh, what's your impression of us? How are we doing with this virus? Like, what is your news telling us? Cause right, right. our news tells us a lot of nonsense <laughs> on both sides. Right. 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 Uh, how, how do you view us? Are you, or do you guys even care? You know, like, do you care? You just say, ah, oh, that's America. Who cares? You know, I don't know. Do you say like that? Or do you say like, oh, they're doing a terrible job. They're doing a good job. So I always get into that off air and then we bring that on air. So it it is cool. I mean, if you're if you're big in the UK, the heck with America. You don't have to be big here. You know, you can be the American plant based chef. It's like uh, everybody knows in the UK. Go with it. You know? Yeah, I mean, it is good. I mean, I've been taking, a, I also taken a course uh, in uh, macrobiotics called um, uh, Macrobiotics America. Um, and they're also out in California, but I've been meeting people from all over the countries, like Saudi Arabia, uh, Australia, <laughs> the UK. And same thing, we all, you know, when we have webinars um, and we always ask, like, what are they saying over there about here? Like, they'll be like, oh, well, we heard you guys have to wear masks or we heard that you guys yeah. are. You know, your restaurants aren't, some of your restaurants aren't open or, you know, we're eating inside or, you know, stuff like that. What is, what is that class? But microbiotics oh, is it? Macrobiotics. So <clears throat> yeah, it's studying, um, it's how, how to eat balanced. Um, basically it's from a Japanese style of eating. So it's a lot of brown rice, um, seaweed for minerals, um, that kind of stuff. And they so eat some, they eat some fish. It's not, it's. It's not totally vegan, although some people do macrobiotic vegan, just like, you know, keto diets right. and things like that. But, I mean, it's been around for ages. I mean, it came from a Japanese way of eating. So it's, uh, you know, brown rice and um, a lot of whole grains. And eating balanced and having a balanced lifestyle. So it's about everything. It's like yin and yang, everything balanced. Okay. How about uh, the radio show you're involved in, Small Bites? That's exciting. Yeah, so we actually went back on there last night. Um, we, uh, Derek, Tim and Donato, uh, are the, uh, co-hosts and they run the, the show. And then there's a bunch of us that are in the crew. Um, everybody has their niche about, you know, like you, you bring in plant-based and somebody will yeah. bring in a, a brewery guy or something like that. Is that how it yeah, works? I, I do plant-based. We have chef Barbie Marshall. Um, she was from hell's kitchen. She okay. was on, she's on the crew. Um, we have John Fusco, Howard Fusco. He's from Cape May. He wrote a book on, um, Discovering Cape May, history of Cape May, I believe. Um, we have Jackie the Joke, Joe Martlin. He's on the show. Um, I hope I don't forget anybody. Um, John, he's another guy. He was on um, Home Shopping. He's doing his own network now thing. So he's, you know, comes in. Um, mm -hmm. But now we can't be in the studio. So again, like you, like we're, we're kind of doing this kind of thing. So uh, last night they were in the studio um, and we all called in each of us. Um, of the crew. So we got to talk to everybody. 
but um, Derek decided to not have the show on during some of the COVID. Um, just because everybody in the restaurant business is trying to get their business going and, you know, um, you know, what was going on with their restaurants that, you know, didn't have time to, you know, be on a radio show. Yeah. Um, and what, it, what, what's the, you know, the subject matter or what, what is small bites all about? What you're talking about just restaurants or I mean, small I bites. I, I know what small bites mean, but <laughs> where do you go? Who do you talk to? What's the subject matter? So for the most part, it is uh, restaurant tours, um, but we also do travel. Um, we have people from the travel industry come on. A lot of people that wrote cookbooks comes on. Um, we have um, people in the wine and beer industry come mm -hmm. out. Um, when we were open, we'd have restaurants come in and they would bring food that we could sample. Um, and which was nice. Most of them brought in plant-based stuff for me, which is, is always nice. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, yeah, and then we, you know, we were in the studio where we would all be there be able to talk to each other. But where is the studio? In Philadelphia? No, this studio is in um, New Jersey. It's in Deptford. Um, okay. Our radio is the podcast, but it's syndicated on a bunch of um, uh, different stations. So if you go to small, uh, Derek Tim, um, webpage, uh, you can find out where, where it's syndicated. It's on Sunday nights at 630 normally. And it's a podcast also. They record it and then they, they upload it and make it into a podcast. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Do if you you're listen? on the show. Yeah. If you're on the show, you get the podcast the next day, you know, so you can promote it and use it. And do I No, I was on YouTube the other day and I haven't watched myself yet. Although I've been getting like great feedback, but I can't watch myself again. Yeah, I can. I can never watch myself either. And a lot of people that come on, they'll they'll get back to me the next day and they'll be like, oh, you know, did you see when we did this? And I say, no, I, if I can't remember it, you, you know, I, right, right. I kind of block myself out right now because I can <laughs> see myself and I, I just try, you know, it's uncomfortable. So you just forget about it. I know um, video stuff. I'm like, it, it is so humid down the shore today. I'm like, my hair is all frizz. I'm like, I don't know about this video stuff. <laughs> Right. You just got to forget about it and think like, well, I don't care. I mean, that's how people yeah. look at me and what, what, whatever, you know, you just try to have good conversation. Well, you look very professional there. You look like uh, the news station where the, the news guys got their um, pictures of their house, but you know, their house. Yeah. Decorated. <laughs> well, I have a lot of tricks and secrets, how I accomplish all this that I can't share. Okay. <laughs> you have to share with me because I just pulled the palm plant. Well, that looks good. It looks good. You got depth. You, you know, I'd like to get a better web camera and stuff like that, but uh, not not right now. Why I'm unemployed for seven months? Exactly. You know? I know trying to do a food demo in your kitchen, and especially mine's probably like a hundred square foot, um, was very difficult to have it set up and to be able to show people, have them see me, have them see the food. And mm -hmm. You're not in a demo kitchen. You don't have cameras above you, mirrors above you. You know, and so trying to do it in your house is is a little tricky. <sighs> You have to be inventive in uh, in producing it and filming it, and I think there's a lot of different ways to to put anything out there because I'm technically I don't know how to edit. I don't, you, you know, like, and so that's my struggle all the time, where I just can't film, go out and start filming, and then come home and editing and, and stuff like that. Somebody from my other videos, where I would go out on interviews, I always had a cameraman and he would edit and we worked okay. together, right? But um. That's where I first found you. I mean, I started watching you on that, doing that. And now with this show, it pops up on my Facebook all the time. So you must be in my 10% of friends that I see uh, on Facebook. I don't know. When I, but, when I got on today, uh, I had 239 people that in my, my friends that were online at that time. Wow. But I have like 2,500 friends. Right. So that means there was, you know, 2,400 people that are not online right now. Right. Right. But I still think that uh, Facebook is the best because it's like NBC. It's like NBC says, well, you can go on. And if nobody sees it today, they might see it tomorrow. And, right. if, you know, and, and people see it. I do like connecting with uh, – it does keep you out there and it does keep you connected with people. But I'm thinking about uh, – I'm thinking about TikTok. And I don't know what I can do on TikTok. And I told uh, – I have a guy, Josh, he comes on with me every Wednesday. And I said, think about TikTok. And he goes, that's not for us. And I said, I know. But we might be able to do something. 30 seconds. Think, what can you do in 30 seconds? Like with you, with plant-based, whether it's just like, hey, look at this. You know, I don't I don't know. But there, there has to be an answer because uh, I think our industry, 
is seriously going to suffer for like two years. You, you know, it's going to, I know for me, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to make the pre COVID money that I made for another, you know, year and a half or something like that. So it's going to take a while to make that up. But uh, as far as TikTok, well, as long as uh, I guess Microsoft or one of them is going to pick it up because of the controversy with, um, with TikTok right now, but um, Instagram has stories, which I do those as well. And people seem to, um, you know, view them. Mm -hmm. um, when you really don't get much feedback from them. Um, but that's another way because people like those quick snippets. Um, like you said, they don't have time to, to sit and they don't even want to read. I don't even like to write uh, Instagram posts that are like paragraphs long. People who write that, I, I don't have time to read a couple paragraphs. And I don't think people want to. They want quick snippets, you know, a tidbit of something. So, um, but I think I think you should go on something like TikTok. Um, if you listen to Gary V, he'll say, you know, at any age you can do that. Um, you know, I've watched Gary V for a long time. I'm a I'm a fan, <clears throat> and I believe a lot of what he says. Uh, my my negative about Gary V, you know him well if you know knowing his name, right? Mm -hmm. My negative about him is that his whole philosophy is just grind, 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 grind. No matter what, grind, grind, grind. You'll make it. You know, if you don't complain, just grind, grind, grind. And he talks about his tough and how he grind it in the beginning. And, um, well, his dad owned the liquor store that he worked at. Right. Okay. So he was middle class, at least. He wasn't like a poor kid, you know? Right. And um, he was making these videos. Now, he has a healthy ego. So even before he was known, he had a healthy ego. And he made these videos. And voila, they took off on YouTube. Right. And from there, he made money. And from there, he invested in YouTube uber and twitter maybe or something else and became a millionaire and um so you know his struggle really wasn't a struggle that's my that's my beat no, on, I agree. on gary i v. agree but i kind of I, I mean he says he's not a motivational speaker but he kind of is i think for a lot mm -hmm. of people a lot of people looked in for advice and he runs the gamut he'll talk to a teenager and then i'll talk to somebody over 50 um you know with the advice he's retweeted me a bunch of times oh um, good you know, I try to get on his show um, just to ask business info, you know, business advice on marketing and that kind of yeah. stuff. I actually, went, before I got in the culinary, I was a business major and I was into marketing. So, uh, you know, I think that's kind of why I like to follow him, too, for the marketing part of it. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, obviously, then he had the opportunity and he's a genius in marketing, in getting branding, in motivating, in getting things out. And, and I like him and I do follow and watch a lot of them. But he makes his struggle like, you know, I was the poor kid and everything was against me. And that wasn't a case. So right, if right. I ever interviewed with him or he was on my show or vice versa, <laughs> I would tell him, you got to be honest. You had a pretty easy, uh, you worked in your dad's store. I know working for your old man can be horrible, but you're never going to get fired. You, you know yeah, what I mean? You'll find a job. Right. Right. So even. Yeah, you, it, should, you should have him on. But yeah. Know, I don't know if he would come on. He was I mean, I'm. I listened to him once in, uh, on, he does this tea with Gary V on Tuesdays and he had somebody on that um, was struggling in their business. And he gave him the idea about a subscription. He's big on subscription things. And even in the food industry, there's a lot of people doing this now too, with, um, you know, subscriptions with food, whether it's wine, whether it's, um, you know, gourmet things or even um, like prepacked meals. Um, but uh, he had this idea about the subscription. And it's funny because like, Right after I heard it, I saw online, there's a local flower farm in, um, I guess, Galloway that's doing subscriptions where you can get flowers every week and pick them up at the farm. And so I did it and I'm getting fresh flowers from now till October. Um, so it's yeah, a great I, business model. I do see that a lot. And I do see a lot of like uh, investors. That's what they look for because there's constant money. How many subscribers do you have? I have a thousand, you know, and they pay right. me $5 a month. Okay. So right. minimum, I have $5,000 a month coming in. Then I can build on top of that. I, uh, for you, and also me, I think, and and I asked somebody that's already doing this. I forget who it was on the show a couple of weeks ago, and I said, "Where do you get the courage at one point to say my content, my knowledge, what I'm teaching you is worth seven dollars a month?" You know what I mean? Like right, right. once you monetize and say, "This is what you, you know. This is my product, and now this is worth seven dollars a month." And then you have to get. It, it's always challenging. I'm always amazed at people that are doing it. 
especially in the restaurant business, because look, we've all worked for free for, I mean, I worked for free for years and I still do. it. Um, <laughs> right. You know, you don't see an industry corporate, you would never work for free. You know, you don't, but the restaurant industry, you want to gain experience. You want to learn stuff. You work for free. So, yes. um, but as yes, far as stage, what's that? is that the word um, stage? Uh, stage. Yeah. They don't, they don't do them as much anymore because now also the liability, but yeah, we, I stodge, I stodged up in New York, um, at restaurants up there, but, um, but in corporate America, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't work eight hours for free. No, uh, but, well, but in the restaurant industry, we, we do a lot of that in order to, to gain the experience to, you know, it's a tough business to be in, but back to those, uh, the subscription, I'm surprised not more restaurants are doing package food that people could go home and finish making mm -hmm. put it together for them give them the raw burger give them the bun give them the whole thing and let them go home and, and finish cooking it um that would be a great thing to do as a package item to you know just I, a pickup item i did have a manager chris crean on a couple weeks ago he runs a bunch of uh restaurants from here to through pennsylvania and he said that in philly some of the steakhouses they were turning into almost like an Omaha steaks kind of thing mm -hmm. where, you know, we'll pack it. You were getting like 40% off. Maybe, you know, the yeah. $50 steak was $26 and we'll pack four of them up in a cooler. And then you can yeah. just come by and pick it up and take it. It's already trimmed and we'll give you some stuff on the side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, takeout is going to be around for a while and yeah. because people aren't going to feel that comfortable, they're going to go out, but not like before or at least for like a year and a half. So the word that is, if you're, open, if you're looking to open a restaurant, you're looking to open a casual takeout right now. I mean, fine dining, you know, you're not going to see any new fine dining restaurants. I don't think, like you said, for a year or so. The fine dining is going to get hit hard. And also those like French laundry, Thomas Keller type restaurants where, you know, it's $370 per person and it's seven courses that you go in. They, uh, I've seen a lot of stories on them where there's, there's no call for them. Like you, you don't feel comfortable being in a restaurant two and a half hours. You, you, yep. you know, that's not going to come back for a while. It might come back, and but it's he's, not he's online doing it from his kitchen. So how can I compete with Thomas Keller doing it for free in his kitchen? Right. <laughs> well, that's what I say too. When you, when you create content, when you go out there, I'm, there are a lot of famous people. I mean, every celebrity and actor and comedian has a podcast. Mm hmm right? And then they're like, do a podcast. And you're like, who's going to listen to my podcast if, you know, you have uh, Jason Bateman doing a podcast, you, you know right. what I mean? Like, you, there's only so many podcasts you can listen to. But I think you have a, a unique angle in in the teaching. And I, as far as I see on YouTube and everything, people go after what they don't know. Right. You, you know, and I'll, and the biggest YouTube channels are like, how do I find something on my MacBook? How do yeah. I use Photoshop? How mm -hmm. do I, you know, edit on iMovie? Because people always want to know what to do. But also with cooking and like you, have you ever thought of teaching with like, I think there's things called iTeacher where you would go in and you would make a video and there, there, are, there are a few different platforms. So you would go in and make a video and you teach. Whether you can make the best apple pie, whether you can teach someone a uh, Photoshop or be a graphic designer, whatever it is, if I want to improve myself in cooking skills, I would go to your right. channel and I would look at your half hour class and you would get paid like seven cents a minute for every watched minute. Oh, no, I haven't heard that. No, it's very good. I'll, I'll, I'll send a link uh, yeah. to you because somebody that is a good friend of mine is a graphic designer. And she said, you know, I'm going to put out like six, seven, eight videos, like 10 hours worth of videos. Now, if it's watched over the next couple of years, thousands and thousands of times, right. I'll make, I'll get somewhat of a check. And if I blow up, I can, I can blow up, right. but it's, it is an interesting way because you're doing it anyway. You're teaching it, you're teaching online, but then, right. um, and you have to, they, they teach you how to teach. Right. It seems funny, but they teach you how to teach online. Like this is yeah, these are the steps way. you should follow. It's a different way of teaching. It's totally different than being in, in you know, having the person in front of you being hands on. You no, know, it's totally different. Yeah. So I, I, w when I look at you, I can concentrate, and then I look up, and I have my TV on in the living room, and the dog is over there. I can, like right. come out no, of I don't it. Know where the dog is. I'm afraid to turn around, but I know. Oh, it it is. Face. It is. Uh, Hard to concentrate. Um, 
are your kids going back to school now? Um, I have a daughter who's at Rowan. Um, it's her second okay. or going in her third year. Um, she was actually in Disney doing an internship when COVID hit. Um, she got the college uh, internship, which was amazing. Um, I highly recommend it for kids to do that when they're back open and when mm -hmm. they do it again. Um, she learned so much. And even though she's going into teaching, I had her do the internship to learn people skills and customer service. Cause I don't care what you do. You need to be good at customer service. Mm -hmm. Um, so she loved it, but then COVID hit, uh, she was there for two and a half months. She was supposed to be there all the way through J July. She had to come back in March was totally miserable, but, um, she started her online school, uh, online Rowan. Rowan is online until I think the holidays. Um, so they're all virtual unless you're a lab class, unless you're like a nurse or, um, right. That kind of thing that has to go in and do labs. So she's all online. And then, um, my son, he's in 10th grade. He'll be going, they said the 21st, but, uh, I don't know when we're not exactly sure what day that school's opening. I mean, we're all, like I said, we're waiting for the governor. And y but, yeah, every, every day like that. So what do you, um, as, as you look for you, we're coming to the end of the summer, kind of where, where are you moving forward into the fall? Are you making plans or you just can't make plans going forward because you don't know what's going to happen? Well, right now, I mean, we're just trying to get our Google Classroom set up and, you know, I'm looking at the curriculum and see what I'm going to teach, what I'm going to be able to teach from home versus I'm going to have to have two plans. I'm going to have to have a plan if we're in there. We're going to have to have a plan if we're virtual. I just wish the governor would tell us a little more than three weeks before we start. I mean, you're not really giving the kids, we're not thinking about the kids here you know, or the teachers. And then you're asking the teachers to plan over the summer when we're not getting paid. As far as I've known, and it's frustrating to me, uh, I've looked, I, I look up when I wake up in the morning, like how many COVID cases in America, is it up or down? And then New Jersey. And there are zero cases in New Jersey for like the last three days. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. But, but the schools that <laughs> open down south, the kids tested, like there's 97,000 kids that, got, that, that are tested with it. I know. So, I mean, that's going to be the example, these schools that open early and what they do, because, you know, how do you keep these kids separate? Like, especially in a lunchroom. Lunchroom, yeah. hallway, goofing off, high fives. I mean, yeah, you, we're not you know, restaurants. How, are we, how are we putting kids in school? Right. So then you have to decide, is it too dangerous for them? And I, I don't know that because it depends who you talk to. Right. right. And then you have right. to decide, is it, is it worth it and going? So, uh, yeah, I just wish we'd get on one page so I can figure out what, what we're all doing. <laughs> but, um, but as far as, uh, everything else, so school is your main concern. And then what is, what are the side projects going into the fall? Just staying on the radio uh, doing some demos. Yeah. Yeah. Doing my demos. Um, I don't think we'll be opening like any kind of community ed classes anytime soon, maybe next spring. At mm -hmm. the earliest. Um, so yeah, I'm going to concentrate on getting in my new school and meeting the kids. In fact, um, this tomorrow I make a video, um, at the school for the ninth graders to welcome them and introduce myself to them. So all the teachers will be doing that, um, tomorrow. So that's fun because, you know, ninth graders coming in, they haven't seen the school. They may Boy. not even have been in the building. They don't know what we look like. So we're going to make a video and then, um, to introduce ourselves. And then um, really concentrate on that and build up my plant-based chat and see, maybe I have to move it over to Facebook um, or, you know, get that going and then, um, you know, see where we stand with the book. But, and, and That's just good. It's a major, know. it's a major accomplishment just to have a publisher interested in you, talk to you, get some ideas going. I mean, I know everybody only says like, oh, well, she didn't get published, but the, the back work behind it and the emails going the out and the rejections I'm sure along the way. And then somebody's interested and then you're talking and you get excited and they're like, yeah, we're not going to do it. So uh, uh, congratulations on that because that's a, that Thank you. anybody can self publish. You can do that. It's a, but to have a publisher, that's, that's nice. That's, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, I guess I, yeah, I just look at it that way. Um, you have a conversation with them is what they call it. So, and my conversation went a bunch, you know, went for a bunch of months and the publisher, he went away for three weeks. And when he came back, it was COVID. And I yeah. was like, oh, you should have sent me the paper before. <laughs> I know before I've had, I've had a hundred almost where I sat in the room with important people, with producers, with, you know, a hundred almost. And I think just to get to that point was so hard. Yeah, yeah. It didn't make it. It didn't go on air. It didn't do whatever it was going to do. But just to get to that point, there's an awful lot of work. So 
yeah. I, I would love to see you have a book because that Thank that you. that's a pretty cool thing. And I wish you the best of luck. Do you want to talk about anything else? I'm I'm good. I'm gonna go check on this puppy. I don't know where I don't know where he went, but he has to be walked. I I mean he's not a puppy, he's eight years old, but he has to be walked. I'm up like one o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock. Okay. I'm walking him. Like uh I gotta get a better routine with him, but um yeah, I don't know where he's hiding. Hopefully he's probably sleeping because he was up all night. <laughs> I was sleeping in your arms. But no, I, I wish everybody in the I wish everybody in the restaurant business, uh, you know, I hope things get better for everybody. I know this outdoor dining stuff stinks. Um, yeah. You know, and I know people are, you know, losing money and out of work. And, you know, I hope, uh, you know, I hope things change really soon for everybody that's in this business because, um, and especially to show the students that, you know, I'm going to be teaching because, you know, we want them to stay in that, in this business, you know, we want them to see that there's a lot still out there opportunities for them to do in the restaurant field and hospitality industry. I went to, uh, I'm going to tell you a quick story. It might be boring, but it's a good, it's one of my good stories. I went to my kids, uh, career days when she was in, when she was in fifth grade. Right. And uh, as a waiter, I'm a waiter, you know, that's not very exciting, but I wanted to do it for my kid and stuff. So, uh, and, and honest to God, there was a fireman and a policeman in there with me at the same time. So these are like every kid's hero. Oh yeah. And I'm in like a vest and a black tie. It was, it was cringeworthy, like so embarrassing, you know, but my daughter said, uh, tell the kids all the famous people you waited on. And then right. I started, so I stopped talking about being a waiter and just talking about all these in, and just being in Atlantic city for so many years, I've literally waited on hundreds of them. So we went through this and through this and through this. And, uh, I beat out the fireman and the cop at the end. And I got more thank you notes than them. Aww. So, you, you know, there is a positive behind us. So when you were talking about school and the kids talking about it, I remember my career day back then that uh, was, that turned out good. That started out bad. Yeah. And, and it, you know, we're again, back to, we're teaching the kids a life skill. When my daughter had her first job. She was uh, at an ice skating rink because she ice skates mm -hmm. and she was party host. And they're like, all right, well you have to set up the cake and everything. And then, and, and she's like, she's like, I got this. My mom teaches culinary. I know this. Go get me some gloves because I'm going to cut the cake. And nice. she's like, I'm walking around with gloves in my pocket, mom. And they were looking at me like I'm crazy. And she goes, but I know you teach serve safe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really it's funny. All good so it is, you know, it's a good I wish you all the right, best of luck team. moving forward. And thank you so much for coming on. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Me too. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye.